Hi, I'm Mark, this is Mark Tech Vlogs on YouTube, and today I'm gonna to bring you a review of the Sonoff Mini R2. Now, if you're anything like me, then up until a couple of months ago, you had no idea about the company called Sonoff. And Sonoff are a company who focus on creating smart home products that allow you basically to make existing things smart. And within all of that, they tend to sit towards the budget end of the smart home market. Now, one of the things that sets them apart from other smart home manufacturers is to use their products, you tend to need to do a little bit of wiring. And I'm gonna talk more about that in this review. And today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Sonoff Mini R2, but it's quite similar to a variety of their other products. And all of these similar kind of retrofit products from Sonoff retail between 10 and 15 pounds. The Sonoff Mini retails at 12 pounds, although you can get it cheaper if you buy it in multi-packs. So if you get the multi-pack of three, it works out about eight pounds 60 each. This makes them super affordable. And really the idea of the Sonoff Mini and a lot of Sonoff's other products is that it kind of acts as a go-between between between your switch and your device. And this basically allows you to make anything smart, whether that's a light around your house or a bathroom fan or a whole variety of other things. Now the design of the Sonoff Mini is surprisingly small. On the top of the device, you've got the reset button and the status light, some text, and then labels for all of your inputs and outputs. And that's about it. It's not the best looking device in the world, but it isn't a device that's meant to be on show. It's a device that you're meant to kind of tuck away somewhere. Now setting up the Mini R2 largely depends on what it is you're connecting it to, but essentially it's a case of removing the existing wires and connecting them to your Sonoff Mini, and then adding some new wires to your device. Now, whenever you work with something with electricity, it's really important to make sure that the power is switched off first. And if you're working with something like a light or a bathroom fan, just make sure it's switched off on your fuse board. It's then also really important that you check that power isn't still going to the device after you've done that. This is so you don't die. Now, when you are connecting it, you basically take the live wire that will go to your device and put it into the Sonoff Mini, and the neutral wire that will go to your device and put it in the Sonoff Mini. You then use some new cables to go to your device from the Sonoff Mini outputs. Now Sonoff recommend you use 2.5 millimeter cable because this is really heavy duty. This doesn't come with the device, but you can pick it up fairly cheaply at most DIY stores. It's also worth saying at this point that because this stuff is hardwired, you might wish to get an electrician to carry this work out for you. Once you've installed the Sonoff Mini, you now basically need to hide it somewhere, although you should decide where you're gonna hide it during the process of setting it up. Now Sonoff shows some examples of people hiding it behind light switches, and so that's gonna depend how deep your light switch is and whether you want to dig more hole into your wall. It's worth saying that Sonoff say you shouldn't hide it in a metal junction box. So if your switch has that, you might need to replace that, or you might want to put it somewhere else. Now for me, because I was hooking it up to extractor fans that are ceiling mounted, it meant I could hide the Sonoff Mini in the loft. This also meant that whilst the Sonoff Mini isn't water resistant, because these were hiding in my loft, they were in a cool, dry place, not in the dampness of my bathroom. If you do need something that's waterproof, the Sonoff Basic does have a waterproof case option. Once you've got everything wired up and hidden away, it's time to turn it on and configure it. So you need to put your mains power back on and then just check that the status light has lit up. From there, you download the EWE Link app and set it up via that app. Now there's a few different ways you can set it up and I found that a basic way just worked every single time. As part of this process, you put in your Wi-Fi password because the device connects to your home Wi-Fi. As part of this process, you also name the device and then in the EWE Link app, you see all your devices just there. From there, you're ready to use it and you can turn it on or off in the app. You can set schedules, timers, and even loop timers. The Sonoff Mini works with Amazon's voice assistant, Google's voice assistant, and also Samsung SmartThings. It's also compatible with Home Assistant for you Raspberry Pi users out there. It's also worth saying that it does work with IFTTT, but this requires a $10 a year subscription from the app before you can use it. I don't know why they decided to charge for that, but they have. If you're a more advanced user, and let's be honest, if you're buying one of these, you probably are, then it is also Homebridge compatible. Homebridge is sort of like a scaled down version of Home Assistant, but also allows you to connect devices into the Apple Home app. This means once you've got your switches set up in Homebridge, you can use them straight from your Apple Home app and also use Apple's home automations as part of that. For example, my bathroom fan is set to come on via the Apple Home app when one of the lights in the bathroom turns on. And these lights are controlled by motion sensors. This means I can have Philips Hue bulbs and my bathroom extractor that's wired to the lighting circuit still works. If you want to know more about my home setup, especially using Homebridge and Raspberry Pi, drop a comment below and I might make a video on that in the future. 
And then finally, if you really want to and you're a very advanced user, the Sunoff Mini R2 has the option for a DIY mode. This basically gives you access to a REST API that you can configure and set up different automations yourself. Personally, in using this, I found the best way to use this is just to set it up with Apple's HomeKit and the automations in there and just let the devices run themselves. For my use case scenario of trying to make a bathroom fan smart, it means that my fan still works and I can still have smart box. All in all, for the more advanced smart home enthusiasts, the Sonoff devices are absolutely brilliant and they let you take your smart home automation to whole new levels. In using them for about a month, I found that they work every single time and setting up those automations basically just means they do what I need them to do in the background and I very rarely have to worry about turning them on or off, but I can override that if I need to. The only real downside is that setting these up isn't particularly easy, especially if your house has some unusual wiring. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you've got any comments, do stick them below and I'll try and answer those. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys again soon.